Hey, hey, Tony Gasson here popping in for a little message today. Now, yesterday we had the message for men and I need to point that out because oftentimes people just see one or the other. And so when it's for the men, the men get mad thinking there's no messages ever on my channel for women. And then when it's for the women, the women get mad as if I never talked to the men. So I just want to state that. This the other side, but not necessarily the other side, because here's the thing. So many people want men and women to be the same and men and women are not the same. And we, what we have to understand as humans is that if a man stands up to pee and a woman sits down to pee, that just biologically already makes the brain work differently because it takes something different to stand up to pee than it does to sit down to pee. We also have to understand that if a woman can give birth and a man cannot give birth, that biologically makes us different. You're going to think differently. Your body is going to grow differently and you're going to act differently, move differently. We are different. So where people want to levy all of the same things to men and to women equally, exactly the same, with no change, that is not wise because we are not the same. Now, we are equal in the sight of God, meaning that God loves men and women equally. We both have very important roles and technically one does not produce life without the other. So even if a woman wants to have a child without having intercourse with a man, she still needs from the man sperm. And if a man wants to have a child without having intercourse with a woman, he still needs a woman to carry the child, even if he has never slept with that woman. So that shows that we are meant to come together and to be one in order to reproduce life and keep the human race alive. And we don't oftentimes think about that. And there are movements that want men to be treated just like women and want women to be treated just like men and want everything to be the same. And very rarely do does the message apply the exact same way. There will always be things that can be intercrossed and we will have similarities on both sides, but God speaks to a man in one way. God speaks to a woman in one way. We worship differently. We hear differently. We parent differently. The things we do in our lives just are not the same. And so it's, it's very important to understand that. We also have to understand strengths and weaknesses. So as men, we need to understand this. As women, you need to understand that. And therefore, when we come together, we are able to relinquish control in areas where we are weak. And we're able to give that to our spouse in humility and in obedience to God by doing what we are called to do. Now, one of the things that I'm noticing with women, and this is from the outside looking out, and yes, this is a male observation and a male opinion. And as humans, we evaluate each other and the same way women can look at men and see what men are doing wrong and see where men are going wrong. The same happens with men looking at women. If I said women could look at men, I may have said it wrong way, but you know what I mean? I maybe think I said it the right way. 
So as I'm looking around, I'll tell you, I'll be honest with you. And this is hard for me because I am a married man. So if you notice the difference in the way that I speak to women, even when the message is hard to say and hard to hear for women, if you notice when I'm speaking to women, I don't curse in my language. I don't use any curse words or any derogatory terms that will be intentionally hurtful. Now, you notice when you see single men on podcasts talking about women, they come in a very blunt and unforgiving, just incompassionate, direct manner. The difference is, is I have a wife. So having a wife, I get to see that my wife deals with everything that every other woman deals with. And not every woman, because there are some women who are anomalies and just don't deal with those things because of how they were raised. But there is a diminishing effect happening in the world as it relates to women and self-love. Self-love and identity is what I would say. So when you look around in the world, one of the things you'll notice is that a lot of women are doing a lot of cosmetic work. And one of the things that I've noticed is that this is women of all races, of all socioeconomic backgrounds, of all financial classes presently, and all nationalities. And it is becoming alarming. And there is such a spirit of comparison amongst women right now that is dangerous and the spirit of comparison it is not the equal within men it is not it is not equal within men and what i mean by that is women oftentimes say and this is out of the mouth of women i've heard countless women say women don't dress for men women dress for other women and we have to ask ourselves what sense does that make if you want to attract a husband if you want to be married to a man if you want to be pleasing in the sight of your husband then why do so many women compete with other women for looks or status or position and say that it has nothing to do with men when in fact if it had nothing to do with men then a woman would not care if she feels another woman looks prettier than her and then the question is asked well who sets the standard of beauty in men and women if we are seeking to attract the opposite sex who sets the standard because if a woman thinks that something is beautiful on a woman but a man thinks it is atrocious and the woman seeks to attract a man and wants her man to be attracted to her so that they can have sexual chemistry and have physical attraction between the two of them, then wouldn't you think a woman will say, let me figure out what is attractive to the type of man that I want to attract. And that's not the case. So because of this self-loving, and it's a difference between self-love and self-loving, 
and I'm making this difference up. And so because of this difference, and here's what I'm saying is to have self-love is to have standards, morals, values, to have a caring concern for your health and wellness, your well-being in your body. To be self-loving is to disregard the thought of others, meaning to say, I don't care what a man thinks. I don't care what a man wants. That is self-loving and that is self-loathing in another way. And we're just going to use words out of place where they sound good. So a, ma a man and a woman or a human wrote the dictionary. I don't know if it was a man or a woman. But being that humans wrote the dictionary, as humans, we get to change the meaning of the word if we need, if we feel it need to mean something else. Thank you very much. So what you need to understand right here is if women are... There's a movement called men going their own way. There are also women going their own way. And both of these movements are of Satan. Because if men go their own way and women go their own way, then that means we're going in opposite directions of each other, which means we are not coming together. We are not getting married, having children, and building a happy, whole, safe, and pleasant, and prosperous family. We are at war, at odds, and we cannot seem to agree. We have what so many marriages call irreconcilable differences. And this is not beneficial. This is not helpful. This is not wise. So women are going their own way. And some people have said the feminist movement. I don't, I haven't looked that term up to see what it exactly means. But from the bits and pieces that I've gained and heard, it, it sounds more destructive than it does building or with good intention. It sounds more like a movement of rebellion. And in some ways, rightfully so. Some things needed to be rebelled against, but there's a, a line that if you go too far, now this rebellion starts to turn into something that is ineffective and unhealthy for us as a people because we're intended to come together and to advance the human race, to advance society, to move the story forward. But if we're going our own way, then we become stagnant and being stagnant, we eventually start to go backwards. And before you know it, we will be a complete society of self lovers. And the Bible talks about that, how men will become lovers of self in the last days. And it's different than self love. So let's be clear about that and understand that the adversary always perverts the things of God. I said that I try to keep my finger on the pulse of the people to feel what people are dealing with and going through. And it's the same thing that Apostle Paul was doing when he was writing the letters to the churches and to the individuals in what we read as books in the Bible. And somebody wrote in the comments and said, that's interesting you say you try to keep your finger on the pulse because that's what mystics always say. And I responded to her and said, the devil always copies God. So as people who are working for God, this is what we are instructed to do, to speak to the needs and the issues that are going on in the world that may pull us further away from God than bring us closer to God. So one of the things on this side 
as I was speaking about with the men and it being vices and all of those things and men refusing to surrender with women, it's becoming self-loving and in this constant pursuit of beauty and adoration and adulation where women are going into a space of extreme vanity. And there are so many women who have a never ending thirst for vanity. And this is becoming very detrimental because it's distancing the women from the men and there is becoming less and less real organic chemistry. There's becoming less and less genuine connection. So, so many women are becoming Barbie dolls. And if you understand a Barbie doll is a piece of plastic. And so many women are becoming a piece of plastic where there is nothing left real about the woman. And therefore, when women become more plastic and not literally, not the literal plastic, but you know what I mean, cosmetically enhanced with fillers and things being put in the body, the more a woman becomes less human and more artificial at the hands of man or woman, at the hands of a doctor, the less attractive she becomes to an authentic and organic man. And the more attractive she, com she becomes to an artificial man. So what then happens is you have artificial men being attracted to artificial women. And these two coming together and having no real connection, no real attraction, but it's a Hollywood glitz and glam magazine, Instagram attraction. And the relationship becomes about showing. The relationship becomes about being something they aren't and doing things for money and monetizing love instead of creating love and cultivating love. It becomes about monetizing love and pimping love to make a living off of love. And that is not the same as being love, showing love and teaching love. So, as women continue to become more and more vain, society starts to lose its backbone because the woman is the backbone. And if a woman loses herself and she loses her self love and she forgets that she is created in the image of God, and she desires to be created by the mind of man, then she gets further away from God mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Because it's hard to have a pure and genuine love for God and to feel like everything or a lot of things he did for you or gave to you are wrong, but they're wrong based on man's opinion. So therefore, women are, so many women are becoming more and more lovers of self and seeking the attention and the admiration of other women and also men. It's a part of the feminist mentality to say, 
I don't care what a man thinks. And that's just not true. Because as humans, we care what humans think, especially the opposite sex. If we are heterosexual, we absolutely care what the opposite sex thinks that goes both ways. That's human nature. Because if a woman did not actually care, she would never change anything. She would never shave. She would never do her hair. She would never brush her teeth. She would never wash her face. But we don't do those things for ourselves. We do those things to be presentable in public. That's why cavemen are depicted in the way that cavemen are depicted. Because before civilization and before corporate jobs and having to keep up with the Joneses, People just live their life. But when you have to be presentable and people start to come into a knowledge of your smell and your appearance, then we have to update and upkeep those things. But what I am seeing is just a an excessive amount of self-hate. And it's interesting how self-hate turns into, on the opposite end of the spectrum, self-loving. And remember what we said now, it's not self-love. And this, this, this is a little hard to understand at times, but I want you to follow me here. Because when you see when we look in the mirror and we're not happy with what we see, God has given mankind the mindset to create some things that can help us with that, that doesn't require cosmetic surgery. But when we aren't willing to do those things because it requires discipline, and it requires sacrifice and it requires consistency unless you have a health issue that even if you did all of those things, it still wouldn't work. Then that is when we go to the microwave instead of the oven. And that's why we see this happening. And ironically, it is now happening in men as well, not to the same extent, not on the same level, but now men are getting a lipo and men are getting hair transplants and men are getting, which hair transplants has been a thing forever, but men are now getting a lot of cosmetic things done. And as men, we are also getting Botox or filler and surgery and different things done trying to look as attractive as other men to be attractive to women. So they show one guy who said he was always cheated on by his woman, by fit guys. The woman would cheat with fit men. So he went and got lipo to look fit, to be fit. Not realizing that a woman doesn't cheat with a man because of his abs. That's, women are not that superficial as men. If a woman cheats with a man because of his body, she is shot out. She is worn out. She has been through the ringer. She has been up and down and all around. And she has lost herself. That's not a feminine trait. And here's what we have to understand. That in these changes, it is affecting our relationships. It is affecting our parenting. Because if men go their own way and women go their own way, now the woman is emulating lost men. Not found men, not whole men, but healthy men. So when a woman says, if a man can do it, I can do it. 
nine out of 10 times, the example of a man she's talking about isn't actually a real man. He is a grown boy. So when do we most often hear a woman say, if a man can do it, I can do it. It's when she is referencing sleeping around, being promiscuous, committing adultery, and what type of man does those things? Lost men, immature men, ignorant men, hurting men. So then what the woman does is takes her righteous mind, her conscious, critical thinking mind, and she swaps it out for a dumbed down, hurting, broken, lost mind and says, because men are doing it, I'm going to do it. So she then says, because men are stupid, I'm going to be stupid and I'm going to sleep around because stupid men sleep around. And I'm going to cheat on my good man because men cheat on their good woman. And it makes sense and it doesn't make sense at the same time. And so that is why I'm saying that we are now becoming more and more of a society of lost women as well as lost men. Because oftentimes women emulate the behavior of men. So as you're thinking about this, I want you to think about as well what you have been hearing in the mindset of women and this new shift, this shift of women pretending to be happy with polygamy, polygyny, polyamory, and polyamorous relationships. Pretending to be okay with their man sleeping with other women, unprotected, impregnating, and then coming back to sleep with them unprotected and impregnating. And in some cases it may not be unprotected. In some cases it may not be impregnating, but it's still a spiritually transmission, a, a spiritual transmission between these humans because the body does not know. A man's body part does not know it has on a prophylactic contraceptive the body does not know when a woman has in a contraceptive what the body is doing is it's creating the godly collision between a sperm and an egg to create life that transmission is so spiritual that we cannot lie down with someone and get up the exact same. We change. And so there are women who receive a man into her body, convincing themselves that they are willingly and openly okay in this day and age where there is no need to replenish the earth, so to speak. So a man does not need to impregnate multiple women because we have enough humans and the rate of human birth is doing just fine. So a woman can have a man to herself and if she can give birth to children, she can have children at her own pace or she can adopt children who have been 
giving up if she can't have children and she can raise those children as her own because they technically become her own if she's raising them. But yet women are saying, I will share a man with other women. And deep down, the reasoning really is because women, those women have lost faith in the ability of a man to be faithful. Those women also have lost their identity and their self-worth and they don't feel worthy of having a man alone. They don't feel like they are deserving of that anymore because the countless immature men that they have settled down with have taught them that, have made them feel that they are less than and they are unworthy because those men were cheating and lying and deceiving and manipulating. And the woman then internalizes that mentality that this man who is ignorant, immature, lost, broke, and hurting has given her based on his irresponsible actions. So today, women are becoming a product of broken men, broken fathers, broken husbands, broken brothers, and women are now suffering from that. And so my call to women is to pick up, regain your righteous mind. Refuse to be changed by the world just because the world around you is changing. Know who you are. Know who made you. Know who created you. Know who called you. And know your place in this world. Love yourself and work on yourself and do what it takes to go to the next level in your life. See, here's something that I, I had to come into the understanding of. So if you see this, as I'm smiling at you, now I have an overbite and it's not, you know, all too noticeable. And I have big teeth, but there's a thing called veneers. And for some reason, I just don't feel comfortable going to get veneers because God gave me these teeth. And God gave man, meaning mankind, the wisdom of how to straighten teeth without shaving my teeth down, without numbing my mouth and shaving my teeth down and putting on a man-made artificial substance to perfect my teeth. The shape of my teeth fit my head, fit my face. So, Mankind has created braces and Invisalign. So what did I do at 32 years old? Because I wasn't in the family, the type of family that could take on another expense like braces as a child, I never got braces. Because that type of care is not often taken in minority households because the funds are not there. And at 32 years old, I said, this is affecting my confidence. This is affecting my delivery. So I need to go through a few, a couple or a few years of looking like a late bloomer 
and people being confused as to why I didn't get braces as a child and why I have braces in my 30s, but it's because I need to be able to smile and I need to be able to laugh and I need to be able to have a full range of emotions without insecurity. So I went and got braces. Now I want to lose weight. And I can easily go get lipo like the gentleman that they're using as the poster child for lipo, male lipo. But something in me will not allow me to take a shortcut knowing that my body is capable of changing if I put in the work. And there's a piece that's been given to me that says if I put in the work and I work my body and I feed my body the right way, wherever my body lands, that is where my body type is supposed to be at this age of my life. But I cannot look at my results if I'm not doing the work. I cannot say this is not fair that my body is like this and this is not fair that this man has an eight pack of abs and I don't have an eight pack of abs so I'm going to doctor such and such Dr. Jim, J-I-M, versus Dr. Jim, G-Y-M, to get abs like this man. If this man is spending two hours in the gym seven days a week, I cannot compare my results to his results because his work is different from my work. I'm sharing that with women to say, I know that I cannot fully understand the pressure that's put on you, but I want to affirm you as another human and not just a man because so many women do not care what a man thinks. And so many women feel like a man is out of place to speak on the body of a woman. But the reason why I'm speaking on the body of a woman is because I love you as my sister in Christ. And I love you as my sister under God because my creator is your creator. And we have to coexist in this world. And people are going to a doctor to change something that they have not consistently and routinely and with a regimen try to change naturally. Never do I, never have I seen a woman, have I met a woman who said, I eat clean and I eat perfect and I work out extremely hard three times a week and my body never changed. I heard a man say, I have never eaten anything by accident. But what I do notice is a lot of women that I know personally who eat whatever they want to eat, stay up all time of night, never work out or work out once a week and then say, I want her body. And this other woman either does the same thing and went and got her body done or she works out and she eats right. And so now there are so many shortcuts being taken to where all it does is create more pain. So when you look around there are thousands of women dying on the table to get a new body when 
they did not have an enlarged heart. And the gym would have changed their body and they would not have died in the gym. But they would have eventually seen results. And by seeing results, they most likely would have come to a point to say, I'm happy with my body, with my results. And although my body does not look like her body, I work for this. This body was built. I work for this. And this is where God wants me to be based on my DNA, my genetics, my race, my age, my health system, my health care, my health makeup. This is where my God wants me to be because I have put in the work consistently. I have fed my body right. And this is where my body has landed. So on that side, there needs to be a reset. And if you're a woman watching this, no matter what you've done, okay, it's in the past. If you've already had surgery, veneers, filler, Botox, you can't change that. But going forward, you have to ask yourself, what is the root? What is the root and what can I do? Because guess what? Countless women have gone to get lipo and had to go get it a second time and a third time. Countless women have gone to get breast augmentations and had to go get it a second time and a third time. Countless humans have gone to get veneers and had to go get them done over again and over again. One lady has a story going viral of all the nerve damage and all the excruciating pain she was in from getting veneers. We have to count the cost. We also have to assess the risk of these societal changes that are forcing us that's making us hate ourselves and feel like we have to compromise our morals, our values, our health, our wealth, our body, our mind, and we have to confront the system. And what I want women to understand is, although it is said that there are less men than women and that there are not enough men to go around, Listen, there are not enough women doing the right things to go around. So if you want to be a woman that is eligible for one of the eligible men, all you have to do is do what other women are unwilling to do. And a lot of women today are unwilling to save their body. A lot of women today are unwilling to stand on what they stand on. A lot of women today are pawns on a chessboard. They are a leaf in the wind. Whatever whim a grown boy comes up with, they are so desperate for love that they let idiots tell them how to live as a woman. And, and then when a man who has a sound mind speaks into the life of a woman from a place of love, we are bashed and attacked and burned at the stake for speaking from a place of love from speaking from a place of care. I'm not trying to serve you up on a silver platter so that I can have your body. I'm not trying to keep you single so that you can stay on here listening to videos about single life or relationships. That's not my goal. My goal is for you to graduate into your destiny, into what you want for your life. I don't even have a daughter and I'm talking to women like this because 
This is my calling from God because what God understands is that he made man and woman and he knows that just women talking to women is not enough and just men talking to men is not enough. He knows that we hear from the opposite sex for those of us who seek his face. Because when you seek the face of God, God instructs us that a wise person seeks correction, seeks reproof, but a fool despises it. So therefore, I share the word in love. And although it's direct and it's real, it's coming from a place of love. And what I want women to understand is that there is an upper echelon morally spiritually and mentally, not financially, morally, spiritually, and emotionally, Mor morally, spiritually, mentally, and emotionally. Let's put all of the Ali's in there. And at this space, there are men elevating to that space. And so as I'm meeting these single men, who are God-fearing men and who are surrendering and submitting to God. They're looking for a certain type of woman that they cannot seem to find. They're looking for a type of woman that is becoming more and more rare. A woman who loves herself enough to enhance her beauty naturally. Makeup is okay. Weave is okay. The gym is okay. Eating right is okay. Braces are okay. If you need something cosmetically that is an injectable and it's for health reasons or it's just a, a very severe need, okay. Men don't really care about the minutia. I don't know what that means, but it sounds good right there. What men care about, what real men care about is the heart and the drive of this woman. So if a woman is complacent, if she's complacent, just not working out, snacking, eating all kind of cake and cookies, letting her body go, letting her health go and saying, I want a husband. God, where is that? Where, where my husband at? Why he can't love me in this place of complacency? If he can't love me complacent and lazy, then he don't deserve me driven and successful. That backwards mentality, but yet looking for a man who has it all together, looking at a man and judging a man. Oh, no, uh, -uh, Tony, uh, uh, he too out of shape. Uh, you're out of shape as well. Y'all on the same page. Y'all can get in the gym together. Like attracts like. He is your equal. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. That's not what I want. Mm -mm. That's not what God told me he has for me. Oh, the red velvet. Good today. That's not what God told me. Mm -mm. That's not what I want. Listen. If you want something different, you got to be something different. Because the men that I know that's seeking the face of God and adhering to the word of God, let me tell you, these men starting businesses, building businesses, they building their body, they losing weight, they building muscle, they working on their credit, they working on, they got their own place to stay or working on it. They got their own transportation. They got their mind right. They got their heart right. And they are in constant pursuit of perfection. As Jesus instructed them to be. To be perfect. As our Father in heaven is perfect. So if you're not doing the same thing. You're down here. With the crowd. And you're saying it's not enough men. It's not enough men. No, it's not enough men because you're in a pool of women who are losing themselves, who are compromising their body, 
compromising their health, compromising their morals, compromising their, their values, and competing for a pool of men who are not men. And so, yes, it's less men. So it's a whole bunch of women for less men. But guess what? If you elevate from the crowd and you become a woman of God and you become a woman who loves yourself, takes care of yourself, prioritizes yourself, works on yourself, then you will then be on eye level with the men who are doing the same thing. And relationship may not be your goal. Right now it might be purpose. It might be business. It might be building what God has instructed you to build and that's totally fine. Because even doing that is gonna elevate you. Even doing that is going to elevate you and you're going to be seen and you're going to be recognized by men who are elevating. And this is what you have to understand. As a woman, it's a lot that you have to face. It's a lot that you're up against. It's a lot that you have to deal with. There's a lot coming at you. There's a lot of temptation. There's a lot of people and things asking you to compromise. I know at times you almost feel forced to compromise. You feel like it's impossible to save yourself from now until marriage and to meet a man. You feel like it's impossible to meet a man who's going to be a real man of God. And you feel like it's impossible to meet a man who is going to be only your man and not dealing with other women. I know at times it feels impossible, but what you have to realize is that God is possible and that when you're walking with him and you're doing what you're instructed to do in his word, y'all, if you don't point right here on Bible right here, and you're doing what you're instructed to do in his word, your life is going to change. You're going to glow. You're going to elevate. And you will be desired by men. You'll be desired by all men. But you will have the discernment to pick out the man of God when he approaches you. And that's what you have to understand. So do not let the world make you feel like you have to get on your back to get a man. Do not let the world make you feel like you have to share a man. Do not let the world make you feel like you have to change everything about you cosmetically under the knife to get a man or to compete with other women because I will be honest with you and if it look good I will tell you if it look good I will tell you I'm gonna tell you what there is not a butt on a woman and I'm a I'm a butt man meaning that's the body part on a woman that I love the most that I have to fall on my knees and cry out to the Lord for forgiveness because that's where I sin. That's where I sin. That is the one sin that I commit. Then we know nobody is perfect. And I know sometimes you probably sit here and say, well, Tony, where do you sin? I sin looking at a booty. That's where I sin. And I'm admitting that. My wife know that. She know it. When we in public, she be looking at me and she be trying to make sure. And it's so many women that are delusional that think that when a man gets married, he all of a sudden blind. And that if a man look at another woman, that means he don't love his wife. That is delusion. That's delusion. That's a fairy tale. Because when I'm telling you this and you and you could see and hear, 
that I'm happily married. And that's something that I still have to pray on. Lord, give me the strength today. Lord, give me the strength today to keep my eyes high in the name of Jesus. And any man I talk to, that's what every single man struggle with. But there are women. Oftentimes it's white women. I think a lot of black women kind of black men being said to be sexual prowess and us being some different in that bed. I think a lot of black women have come to the understanding that a black man got to be renewed by Christ in order for him to change his life in that area. But it's oftentimes other women of other races I see in the comments saying, Oh, well, that's disrespectful. Don't you, don't you think we know that? Don't you think we know that? Don't you think that the men of God, that's what we fighting for? That's what we praying on? But back to what I was trying to tell you is there is no butt on a woman that look better than a naturally built butt. There is no butt on a woman that look better than women who go get their butt done look like the ants on a bug's life, the movie. It just don't look realistic. It don't matter how perfectly the doctor shaped it. It just don't go right with the lower back and with the upper thighs. It just don't go right. It just don't look right. It's something about a cellulite, something about a little bit of a droop, something about a little bit of a misshape that makes what God gave a woman who takes care of her body, who working out, who walking every day, who doing what she could do, no matter what her size is, she going to have her natural shape. What God gave her ain't nothing more beautiful than that. It is no doctor in the world that could do what God done done. I'm going to tell you something. You don't need a doctor for your breast unless you got breast cancer. You don't need a doctor for your booty. You don't need a doctor for your stomach. You don't need a doctor for your arms. You don't need a doctor for your legs. You don't need a doctor for your face. Unless you have a legitimate health issue, I want you to find love in yourself. Not self-loving in the negative sense of the word, but to have self-love in the healthy sense of the word. And know that you have a power. It's going to take consistency. It's going to take discipline. It's going to take self-love. It's going to take morals. It's going to take values to stand on what you stand on to know what you know, to do what you do, and not be swayed by this world. Hey, thank you so much for getting here. I know and you talk for an hour off the top of your head. I don't have any note cards. I, if you don't believe me, I would show you, but my desk a little bit messy, and I got five bank cards out right here, and I don't want nobody to steal my numbers. I don't have note cards. I don't have a PowerPoint. When you see me look away, you see me, it's just me resetting my eyes from just staring at the little camera hole on the phone. I'm on a cell phone. So when I'm talking for an hour, please understand this. I'm, I'm going to misspeak. I'm going to say some things wrong. And when you see the devil in the comments, just, you know, pray for him. And if you understand where I'm coming from, then try to help them understand where I'm coming from because... We don't want anybody to be left out of loss. And also, make sure you click the link in the description. I'm enrolling right now to group coaching. We're doing group coaching starting this month in February. We're going to probably do it in the last week of February, giving people time to get in and all throughout this year. Not sure we'll roll in the next year, but we'll assess based on how successful this year is. But if you don't have a life coach or if you need an additional life coach or if you want to be in a group of like-minded people, then make sure you click the link in the description and join us in the growth club where we have monthly calls and we're going to have bonus calls every month and we're just growing together on all topics not lover it's not a love relationship thing it's a growth club we're growing in every area life love and business hey this is tony gaskins 
Hope to work with you soon in a more personal way in our growth club. We'll talk soon. Lord willing, I'll see you tomorrow.